In this text tip project, I will going to go over how to build a very simple Windows Server Monitor in PowerShell. This project is going to be about how we can read server names from a CSV file. Once we do that, we'll then loop through each of those, check the service status on one or more different services, and if that service is stopped, we will go ahead and try to start it. So to start off with, we need a data source. In this case, I'm going to be using a CSV file. Uh, with PowerShell, can read all kinds of different data sources, a database, Excel, uh, CSV files, text files, whatever have you. So I'm just going to use a CSV file. So you can notice there when I bring in the dollar servers variable, I have a computer name property and I have SRV1, localhost, and SRV2. Some example names um, in there of potential servers that I may have available. Next up, I need to figure out how to run the get service command. The get service command, we need to grab the service status of it. So we need to run this. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens here. All right, looks like it couldn't find any service with the name WAUSERV. It got one of them and it didn't do the other one. So it looks like that we have two of them that either the service doesn't exist, which is the Windows Update agent, it should, or the server just simply could not be contacted. We need to add some kind of validation in here first. So let's let's build this out a little bit so for now let's actually take this piece here and we will just uh, add in um, some additional logic in here so we'll take all this out and now we need to first check and see if the server is online to do that we can add some conditional logic in here and let's say we'll use test connection computer name name of the server so notice that if we are using get service that I see status name and display name. I don't see the name of the server. We need to figure out the name of the server. So let's first inspect and see what kind of properties this thing returns. I will just do select star and see if we have the server name in here anywhere. Okay, machine name. Okay, we have machine name here because we don't have the actual name of the server because we are not piping it through here. So let's grab all of this and then see if we can find, get the machine name to come up with select star. Okay, input object not be bound. Okay, that's fine because we have dot text instead of dot CSV. So we change that. All right, once that gets done, now we can see the machine that was online, which is just my local host. I have the machine name of local host. So the machine name does come up. But however, notice that we have a machine name of local host here, but we don't have any of that here. We cannot, if get service doesn't return anything, we don't have that property available. So we cannot use that approach. So the better way to do this is we take this get service expression out here and then let's just look at the properties in the CSV directly. To do that, I will directly reference the computer name property here and see if I can get that to return. All right, this doesn't do that. So because we didn't use the CSV, all right, we change that. And then now we have the server name property here. We have the computer name. So this is a start. We have the computer name. Now what we can do is we can add a condition in here. We'll add some conditional logic and say, if the server name is online, then just for some debugging purposes, I would just return computer name here. See what this looks like. Okay, now you can see that it only returned local host because the SRV1 and SRV2 were not online. So we have our conditional logic ready to go. I, will, I would like to add something else in here to know that it actually skipped these. Um, so I would just go ahead and put a write host command in here and say the server was offline. And need to enclose these in parentheses. All right, now we'll go ahead and save this. I'll try this again. Okay, now it says the SRV1 was offline. 
localhost, which is the name of the uh, the local host that I have here that's, that, that pings, and it says the other one was offline. So this is a, a good start here, all right? So now we have some conditional logic here. We can do some error handling ahead of time. At this point, I will copy this into my other for each loop. Then I will embed this logic inside of here. We want to only check the service if the server is online. At this point, it's only going to check if the status, if the server status is stopped. However, we need to change this here. This is refactoring on the fly. Now we need to put this down here because we only want to check the service if the server is online. So let's say we can call this service status. Get service name. We're checking the WUAU SERV service. And then now we need to add the computer name, which is the name of the computer that we are processing here. And looks like it is dollar underscore. We're using the computer name property inside of the CSV. So now what this is going to do is it's going to first check and see if it pings on 18. If it does, it's going to try to get the status of the service on 19. And then the next line there, it's going to check to see if the status is equal to stopped. If it is, it's going to tell us that it's not started, and then it's going to try to start it. If it's not stopped, then it's going to just say it's already started. Else, if we didn't even detect that the server was online, it's just going to tell us it was offline. So I will go ahead and run this and hope it all works. All right, it does not. Let's see why the computer name cannot be found on this object. So why does the computer name cannot be found on this object? Oh, because we need the CSV, it's not a text file. Okay, the property status cannot be found on this object. Why is the property status not found on the object? Well, let's see here, because we didn't actually use service status. So notice that we have, we assigned the output of get service to service status. Because we did some refactoring, this pipeline variable here, dollar underscore, doesn't work anymore. We need to actually change this to service status because the dollar underscore at this time represents the output from the CSV. Same thing here, we need to change that there. All right, so now that we've done that. Okay, the, okay, let's see here. The property name cannot be found in this object to verify that the property exists. So it went through one, the server one was offline. And then it said the property name could not be found on the object. So why is that? Let's see here. So the property name, so we look for dollar underscore name because again, we did not replace the service status. So we go over here, change this to here, replace each of these pipeline variables to our service status, and we try it again. All right, so now we have a working copy. Glad you went through that dynamic refactoring on the fly. I think uh, I like to keep these in because it's really good uh, learning material as we go through because these things are, are not scripted whatsoever. It's really good. Uh, I think it's really good learning to uh, see how these things don't work sometimes. So now that you can see that the server SRV1 was offline, it told us didn't return any error. Then it says the WAU service on localhost is already started, and then it says it was offline. So now to prove that this works, to test all these scenarios, let's go ahead and stop the WUAU SERV service on the localhost. Run this again, and we hope that it's going to say it's not started attempting to start. Voila, it works. We run this again. And then now it should say that it was already started. Yep. So now you have a simple script that you can use to read a CSV file, read each of the server names in there, ping each server as it's getting processed. If the server name is online, check the service status. If the service status is stopped, it will attempt to start, if not already started. So this is a really good way to add multiple conditions. We did this on the fly. It's a, it's a great way to add multiple conditions to check for, to validate errors, and to make sure that you're able to process each of these servers in this CSV, even if they aren't online or if some kind of problem comes up. 
So that was the project how to build a simple Windows Server Monitor in PowerShell.